G'day folks, Cam Wild Wild Tour and I'm out with Dan from Epic Drives Western Australia. How are you Dan? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're in a bit of a predicament. Good start though. It is a good start. We've yeah. come out to, um, where are we, Dwelling Up? I think so. Yeah, around Dwelling Up way. This is actually the fence line run uh, where I did the King's Dominator winch review. Winches, piece of shit. I've come back to the exact same hill. I've hit it again and got stuck in about the same spot. I got a little bit further this time, uh, but I've now got the run for 11,000 pound winch. I'm going to pull that out and and see if it does a better job than the Kings did. And then if you hang on at the end of the video, uh, I'm going to do a tear down of the old winch, show you how to fit a new one, and um, a little bit of a review on the rumba. And if you check out Dan's channel, Epic Drives, uh, yeah. while we're out here, what are we doing? We're full driving. Yep. And uh, well, we're going to have a chat. So I'm going to have a chat with Cam about his channel, which if you watch his channel, there'll be no news to you. But for if there's some, for some re weird reason, you're from WA and you four wheel drive and you haven't heard of Cam, well, check out his channel. Right? Let's get stuck into it. So yeah, the last time I was here, where those back wheels were, my front wheels were. Um, so I've got a little bit further, about a car length difference this time. But still going to need the winch. I thought I was done there, I thought I was out, but I picked a bit of a shitty line and I'm completely bellied out, doesn't look like much, but all four wheels are just going. So I just got to pull myself off that bellied out bit another couple of metres and then uh, we're probably going to turn around and find somewhere to sit down and have some lunch, so I reckon the winch has had enough of a test, <laughs> it works. Seriously, it's 
Australia. Alright, we're gonna be here a while. Hopefully that's um that's nothing too serious, but shit. Plan is now we're gonna try to move it back as much as we can and just gonna stick these max tracks, well they're not max tracks, treads underneath. And um, see if we can't get a bit of traction just to get out because Cam's diff is um well and truly wedged and we've just been dragging it. Oh, I put it in front for it. You go forwards? Yeah. Oh shit. My bad. <laughs> so the plan that I had planned is not the plan. The plan is to go forwards. Try and lift the diffs out. Whilst winching, that's fucked. Yeah. Those mounts have obviously moved. Well, there you go. I don't know it took about an hour. So that's the run for 11 XP premium in action. Um, it's early days yet, so I can't say too much about it. Uh, but first impressions are, I'm really impressed. It did exactly what it should do. Um, yeah, it worked pretty much effortlessly. I was skull dragging a three ton car with all four wheels off the floor along the diffs up that hill. Uh, and the bull bar was going to rip off before the winch failed. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, didn't make any freaky noises, didn't fail on me, didn't get hot. Uh, the remote is really nice to use. Uh, it's a really nice feature. Um, yeah, so it's early days. I'll do a follow-up video around this time next year um, after our trip around Australia where it's going to get a heap of abuse. I'll put together a montage of all the times it's been used, uh, including with a camper trailer in tow probably be doing double line pulls for that I imagine um, but I expect to have the same sort of results I think after a year of abuse it should still be going strong uh, anyway if you want to see an unboxing run through some more features and a little bit of detail on how to fit one keep watching because that's coming up now otherwise thanks for watching cheers guys front end of the D-Max has had a bit of a, um, a rebirth lately got the new steady spotlights on there and I've also got the new Oricon DTX 4200 UHF. If you're interested in them, have a look at my channel. There's other videos on how to install them and, and reviews on those products. The final thing to do really on the front end is the winch. I've got the King's Dominator X winch in there. 
failed on me multiple times. Uh, the last time it sounds like it's stripped gears, so it needs pulling out and replacing. It's the second Dominator, King's Dominator winch I've had. Um, so I would have been replacing it with the third one, which means spending around 1200 bucks on King's winches. That's too much. Uh, it's time to upgrade to something. So on my last video of the King's winch breaking, I put the call out to you fellas on YouTube and asked you what you think I should replace it with. Uh, overwhelmingly, the response was pretty consistent. People said uh, the Runva, the Carbon, or go all out on a Warn. Now the Warn is out of my price range. I'm a tight ass. It's just too much to spend. I've got no doubt they're great winches, but I can't justify that much money on a winch. I want something decent, um, but it's got to be affordable. So it was between the Carbon and the Runva. Um, both looked really good. At the end of the day, I went the Runva. The company were really good to deal with. Um, I sent them a few emails asking a few questions to make sure that it was the right fit for me. Uh, first up, I was going to get their 1300 pound winch. And he got back to me, gave me some dimensions and said it's unlikely that it will fit your bull bar on your car. And he was right, so he saved me a lot of heartache there, ordering the wrong winch, having to return it and then get something else. Um, looking at their lineup of winches, the 11 XP Premium by Runva looked like the best fit for me. Specs the winch pretty similar to the King's one that's in there. Uh, I'm just hoping that the build quality is going to be a hell of a lot better because that's where I've had issues with the King's. The King's did pull okay, it's just that it doesn't last. And a winch is insurance for your car, really. Uh, you only use a winch when you really need it. I'm going to be a remote driving around Australia with my wife, towing a big camper trailer, uh, and my, my three-year-old daughter. So can't afford to get stuck somewhere and not be able to recover ourselves. I need a winch to work. Um, so main feature of the run that I really liked, it's IP67. Um, one of the times the King's winch failed was because it got uh, moisture inside it, inside the electrical side of things. So these are IP67, means it can run for half an hour, one metre underwater without getting any water into it. Um, and then obviously it's dust and whatnot, it's not get into, gonna get into it either. So that's pretty impressive. The other thing is that King's winch I had, had a one year uh, limited warranty. This has got a five year warranty on electrical and a lifetime warranty on mechanical. Um, so this has failed on me, King's failed on me once electrically and once mechanically. And this last time it's absolutely shagged, I think, but we'll pull it out and have a look. Uh, so if I'd had the same issues with this, uh, I would have been able to replace it for another one or get it repaired, uh, whatever the case is, I haven't actually checked that. But either way, uh, I would have had it sorted. So anyway, let's get this bad boy open. So Runver have been manufacturing winches for um, over 20 years. Yes, they're Chinese made. But from what I hear, they've got it down pat over the last 20 years. And they seem to have a really good reputation. Um, all the reviews I read online, the vast majority of them are positive. Don't read too much negative about them at all. So they come with an isolator switch, that's nice. Whoa! Didn't mean to do that. Yeah, so they come with an isolator switch, that's pretty cool. So you can stop people from uh, using it when you're not around your car. A thimble on the front end, that's pretty cool. Some stickers, some reading material. I'm assuming that's a bracket for the um, control box. There's a remote, a wired remote, a couple of study coolers, oh, came with a big shackle, bow shackle, some more mounting hardware. Right, the first of the cabling. Control box and the rest of the cabling. Oh, that's nice. There is a wireless remote on this as well.
and a waterproof cover where the wide remote plugs in, that's good. Nice looking. I forget what these are called. Horse? Fair lead horse? Cable guide? Anyway, one of them. Pulley block, wouldn't have expected that in the kit, but that's cool. Some more cable. Some more mounting hardware. What we got here? Ah. A neoprene cover if you're gonna top mount it. I won't be able to use that unfortunately because mine's going to be in the bull bar. Right, and the winch itself. Now she's pretty heavy. I think the King's one was 27 kilo. This one's 33, I'm going to say. Dyneema rope, not wire, clutch housing on this side, electrics that side. It's going to mount exactly like that, mounting points down on mine. Horse in front there, wire through, cables back to the battery into the control box. That's it. These are really easy to install. Um, getting the bull, for me, I have to take the bull bar off, not everyone does. Some people are able to go through the grill. On my car you can't, not with this bull bar anyway. Um, getting the bull bar off is easy, mounting the winch is easy, uh, wiring up the winch is really easy, everything's colour coded, so you know what what colour buddy, what colour wire goes to which terminal, so that's real simple. There is instructions if you need them, I'll have a glance over them. The, the only thing that's really difficult is lining up the bull bar when you put it back on afterwards. I'll still do it by myself. It is a bit of a prick of a job. I'll have to do it two or three times to get it straight, but only because I'm doing it solo. If you've got a mate to help you, or your missus, or your kids, or your neighbours, or something like that, then it's a really easy job. It'll probably take me a couple of hours going slow and make sure I get things right. Um, but yeah, save some money and give it a crack yourself. Then you can spend a bit more on a decent winch um, rather than labour of someone fitting a cheap shitty winch. But yeah, anyway, let's get this bull bar off and get this thing fitted. All right, so I'm gonna have to take brush bars off, Ooh, which are loose anyway, it's not good. Brush bars off, um, antennas off, unplug the spotties, unplug the fog lights and the indicators, bash plates off the bottom that connect between the chassis and the bull bar, and then bull bar mounting points, and I'll drop the bull bar away. And then we'll start unwiring the old winch, unbolt the old winch, pull it out, and we can start putting the new stuff in. Don't need anything flash or fancy tools wise, just standard stuff you'd have in your shed. I've obviously pulled the spool off because I couldn't wind it back in when I was out on the tracks. But these um, these cross members that are meant to hold the motor and the gearbox together have obviously rattled loose, fallen out on corrugations. This car's done a lot of corrugations. And uh, the motor and the gearbox have split and the cog's been sort of half engaged in the gear. And uh, that's why that's why I've, I've uh, sheared all the gears. So there you go. If you have got a King's winch, or if you're buying a King's winch, buddy, pull the whole thing apart, re-grease it, re-seal it, 
rebuild the bloody thing before you even go. Use a little bit of thread lock on everything. If these rods had been thread locked, this probably wouldn't have happened. So I'm not gonna do any of that to the runver. The runver's gonna go in exactly as I unboxed it. Um, I'm not gonna re-grease it. I'm not gonna split it and reseal it. Uh, I'm not gonna thread lock all the nuts. Um, it's ready to go straight in and it's backed by a five year warranty and uh, on electrical and, and lifetime warranty on mechanical. So if this would have happened, I'd have pulled the thing out and put a new one in or a rebuilt one in. So anyway, let's get this boat anchor out and bit it. So I need to rotate the gearbox to uh, fit where I'm planning to mount it. So I'm just gonna undo all these hex heads on the top, spin it around to where I need it, and then we can mount it in the car. Spin that to where I need it. So we got a flat wash from the bottom, spring washer next, and I've slid the nuts into each four corner, and I'm just buttoning it up from underneath. I'll hook the earth cable up now, so it'll go from the bottom to the uh, negative terminal on the battery. Now what I'll do is just put one bolt either side, just so it doesn't fall on me, but I'll leave it loose until I've got everything else back on, just to make sure no cables are gonna be pinched or anything like that. And then I'll actually test the winch um, before I uh, finish bolting everything back up, just in case for whatever reason the winch had to come back out, because that would be a pain in the bum. There's two different brackets for mounting it. One to mount it that way, and one to mount it like that. I'm gonna be using this one. So wiring it up is super simple. Off the back of the control box, which I just mounted to the bull bar there. You've got four leads coming off. The big long one goes to the positive terminal of your battery. Ideally, you'll run it up here somewhere near the battery to this isolator switch and then you'll have a short lead going to the battery so you can turn the thing on and off with the bonnet up. Or you can mount that to your ball bar or wherever you want. So that long one goes to the battery. These three shorter ones, blue, yellow, and red, I'm gonna go back down to the winch itself. And there's three terminals on the top of the motor housing with uh, colored rings. One's blue, one's yellow, one's red. So it's that simple. So the winch itself is going to be earth straight to the battery on a negative terminal. So that was from the bottom of the winch motor. This cable's run through the grill and up to the negative terminal. But the motor needs to be earthed as well. So you'll notice there's a, a little thinner cable here. I'll earth that to the bottom of the um, controller as well. The fixing I'm using to mount the controller down, I'll just stick that above the nut and that'll be fine. Alrighty, so I've ran the winch isolator switch to here.
That's really cool. I love that you can use the remote without having to plug anything in. I should probably fit the bull bar first before I pull that tight. Also like there's a light that tells you when it's on or off. So you're not gonna flatten the batteries. That's cool. So that's it really, now that I know that it works, I'll just bolt the bull bar back on. Um, and you know, the UHF antenna and a few other things I had to undo. And then that's it. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Should only take you a couple of hours. Um, and I'm just using the toolkit that I normally, normally take away with me. So yeah, nothing too special or anything needed to do it. Anyone could have a crack, give it a go yourself. Cheers.